front of a brilliant studio audience at the Folk School Coffee Parlor in Ludlow, Kentucky. My daddy came and home is, ladies and gentlemen, every day from there. Jerry Springer. With my oh, poor guy. How, how, more, how does anyone get above the weather? I don't know. It's a good question, but you're yeah. not. Yeah, you're not. You know, I, no, I, I've, I've had a little bit of the. Did you get? Did you get flu. a flu shot this year? See, that's the thing. And what'd you get? Yeah, I got the, the flu. flu. <laughs> See, <laughs> I said, yeah. I, if I it doesn't only give got you that. autism. It yeah. doesn't make your brain cells go away. It keeps you from getting the flu. I, sh I should have had it. Oh, you didn't I, get one. No, I had the Jerry. I had the funny shot, and that's why I'm so hysterical. Well, we're gonna <laughs> go ahead and look into the research on that too, because it's <laughs> not in now. <laughs> Hey, by the way, it makes me think of something, mm. Fun, being funny and all that. Uh, how do I say this? I'm just going to say it directly, and it's a it's kind of a cuss word, but you have a lot of wise acidness. Why, you're kind of a wise ass. Would you agree? A little bit. Well, okay. well if I, I mean, have to. For example, <laughs> yeah. did you get into a little bit of trouble in the U.S. Army for being just kind oh. of a wise ass? Yeah, this this did. Oh, well, I mean, you've told that told, story. We no, we've told, told that story. Oh, yeah. 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 But you have, you just have a, and it's, there have been some other cases, like last, I don't know, a week ago, maybe the last episode, uh, we had a performer on, and, and you made kind of a crack about, well, we should have taken you to Cuba instead of Casey, and then right. Casey had a good comeback for it. It's yeah. all good natured, <laughs> goofing it's around. It's all good natured. It's kind of a wise acid. Yeah. I so was where like, does the a... wise acidness come from? Do you tra yes. track it back to like grade school, where you kind of Oh, a, clearly, yeah. Coping you know, one, mechanism? Well, it? A, a coping mechanism. Yeah, is well, it a defense I, mechanism? When I came to America, I was five. Right. And I wore, you know, my, I think I told this story. My mom dressed me the first day of school in America, which was in New York. She dressed me in what British boys at the time wore, which was my blue shorts, a jacket, a bow tie, a beret, and knee socks. Wow. So that went over and the swimmingly. Kids, oh, you better be a wise oh, ass. this is New York. The kids beat the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, right. And they I know you came from a like, I've been there. You came from a like pretty rough area oh, in New York. Yeah. I've seen it. But anyway. Yeah. 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 <laughs> anyway, so I was picked on a lot primarily because of the way I dressed and also because of my accent. Because in the beginning, I had a obviously British accent. And it was just different. I don't mean meanly picked on, but just teased a lot and stuff like that. But, and then in, 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 in Britain, you know, back then, everything was very proper. And, of course, if a teacher, you, you sat in class and you behaved, and the teacher asked a question, you knew the answer, you raised your hand. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't yet realize that often in America, you know, at least back then, it's kind of not cool always to be raising your hand. You were, the, yeah. you were the little kid that said, teacher, teacher, you forgot the quiz. You said we were <laughs> yeah, going to have a really. quiz today. Right. Did you collect homework? So you teacher. forgot to get the yeah. homework. Yeah. So I said, uh, uh, shut uh, up. Uh, Mrs. Eisenson, aren't we supposed to have an exam today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet yeah. you had friends. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, and they were just so ticked off. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I became a, yeah. Plus, I obviously wasn't very strong. So the way you survived is you either tried to be very funny or you could run very fast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got one. Oh. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, well, wow, running fast. You know, and I, I wanted to ask you and Megan both, if, like this weekend I was out hunting for Bigfoot, Sasquatch. Spent the weekend searching for, <laughs> searching yeah. for Sasquatch. Oh, Lord. And I, really, I camped out a couple nights and sort of some dense air, wooded area in South Central Ohio along the Little Miami River. And I, wa I wondered if you guys would sometime in the near future, maybe next weekend, join me on another excursion searching for Bigfoot, the elusive Sasquatch. No. Camp out? And, uh, no. <laughs> I, oh, gosh, I've got to sort socks. That's right. Really. Yeah, Friday I sort I'm going to wash socks. my hair. I can't. I'm a little yeah. bit of an expert yeah. on it because you, I wrote. What? You wrote an article I wrote for an it. article. Well, let me just mention this real fast. Yeah. Really? Listeners might be yeah. curious yeah. about this. Cincinnati Magazine, right? Right. Yeah. I've written a series of articles for Cincinnati Magazine. One of them was, and I, cut, I, I love it because the way I have done this, I haven't done articles for them lately because I spend my time on the podcast, but I call them up. Sometimes they call me. Mm hmm and they say, hey, would you do this? It's usually almost like a George Plimpton kind of thing mm -hmm. from way back yeah. in the day, sure. where somebody who would go out and <clears throat> do stuff and then write about it. So 
that I, get, I would get that, and then I would call, and I always said yes, and then I would call them, and, and I always kind of tested their limits where they would say, no, you're crazy. You know, <laughs> we're not doing that. This was one of those. So I called up and I said, I want to uh, search for Sasquatch in Cincinnati. No, no answer. My <laughs> editor's just listening. And I said, you know, don't hang up, don't hang up. Yeah. There is a group called <coughs> Tri-State Bigfoot the Tri-State Bigfoot Association. And Tri-State means Ohio, Kentucky, and Indiana. And there have been sightings of Bigfoot in Cincinnati, Sailor Park, which is part of the city limits mm -hmm. along the Ohio River, mm -hmm. and uh, Morrow, Ohio, which is uh, sort of a small town north of Cincinnati. I found these people from Tri-State Bigfoot. I spent, they said, I said I want, you guys hunting for Bigfoot? Yeah, I want to go with you. Oh, yeah, I'd love to have you. So I went with them. We went to Todd's Fork, this creek out mm -hmm. south central Ohio. They took me to the place where there was a Bigfoot sighting. We searched for tracks. I then, in this, doing this <coughs> article, went to Big Salt, uh, Salt Fork State Park, east of Columbus, Ohio, about an hour and a half drive where I met with a ranger on a Sunday who took me into the woods of that park. And this and ranger showed had me. seen. He, he, had, he took me where there had been sightings. He told me about a ranger he friend of his. <laughs> told me about a ranger friend of his who So it was uh, a swears. friend of a friend. He saw of one, a friend. No. They do, oh, it gets better. They do Bigfoot hikes. They get big numbers of people who hmm. come to Salt Fork State Park, part of the state Didn't park we system. Go there once? I don't I think, think we've we ever been there. No, well, I've been to Shawnee, but Shawnee, I've been to Shawnee right. looking for Bigfoot. And the way you do it is you and take. How's it going? <laughs> well, I was going to say, I was gonna say so what's, what's the outcome of all this? Did you find the tracks? Did you see well, Bigfoot? Just, <laughs> Megan, <laughs> it's a search. <laughs> it's a <laughs> Megan, Have you it's had about any empirical evidence, Gene? Is there anything that you can mm -hmm. look hey, at and you say? You want to know how I ended the article? How? <clears throat> I, oh, and I interviewed uh, Thane Maynard, the director oh, yeah, of the, the Cincinnati Zoo. He's a big time guy. Because he'd be interested. You know who Jane Goddard is? Goodell. Good Goodall. Jane Goodall. Yeah. She, I found her quotes. I couldn't get to her yeah. to do an interview she where she says possible. they exist. She says possible. Thane Maynard said, yeah, it's possible. So um, anyway, I c concluded the article by saying, you know, as far as like backcountry travel, backpacking, I'm kind of at the advanced level of that. You, you know this. Yes, I talk you to you are. about that it a lot over That's our whole joke. lives of our friendship. You are a hiker. I have been dropped off with a bush plane in Alaska, they come back. I've been Montana, I've been the Appalachian Trail, I've been a lot of places. I have never, ever seen a Bigfoot. Hmm. I think it's absurd, to be honest, is what okay. I think. But you always have to kind of, Megan, you gotta keep an open mind. You have to keep an open mind. And at what point does a big bear become Bigfoot? Big you wanna know what I think goes on in Salt Fork State Park? And I confronted the ranger, yeah. I put it in the article. I said, look, you're getting big numbers, you're getting traffic into the park because there have been these sightings. And you, you don't have to answer <coughs> me, but you like that because it drives sure. up your uh, attendance. Yeah. And he wouldn't answer, but yeah. I, I'm la smiling at him yeah. and he's trying to fight back the laughing of yeah. like, hell yeah, I mean, we'll let everybody <laughs> believe this and wants to yeah. believe it. Sure. There gotta be, think about this. How many people do we know in our youth who would say, dude, I'm gonna get me a Bigfoot costume I'm going yeah. up the yeah. south. One of them sitting salt right forward. between what? us. <laughs> yeah. And run around the woods. And who, yeah. who would know unless you shoot it and then go, oh, my God, I killed a person. <laughs> so I don't. Oh, and by the way, the way you do this, you take a, a stick about the size of a baseball bat. This is called knocking. We did this over the weekend when we were camped out. And uh, Greg Schran and yeah. I have mm -hmm. been backpacking forever, so we're always looking for Bigfoot. We, we always walk into a campsite, and I say, Greg, this is pretty squatchy. <laughs> this could be it. This feels pretty squatchy. So you here. take a stick and pounding Pound against it. a tree. And, and the Bigfoot will, and the plural of Bigfoot is Bigfoots, not big feet, but Bigfoots. And, the, and some Bigfoots then would start knocking back. They might be on the other side of a ridge or something. They hear that. How do you knock. know that? Who's right. ever heard that? He watched Harry and the Hendersons. It says it right there in the you movie. Have no, you have no faith. You have no trust to you. You don't trust anybody. You don't believe in anything. You don't have any faith. Well, I believe in Santa. Yeah, well. <laughs> makes no sense at all. But at least Santa leaves a trail. <laughs> yeah, at least some presents. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Huh. 
And then the other one is you howl. And so we, we sit around a fire. Shut up. We smoke cigars, <laughs> drink whiskey, and every now and then one of us will break into a howl. Ooh! <laughs> Ooh! <laughs> and we wait. Oh my wait, God. did you hear that? It's Matt. It's, it's just oh, that, was, that was catfish. It's <laughs> catfish. <laughs> there he is. Wow. And one more thing. And oh, gosh. Because we, we're going to have some great music later on, and Jerry's going to talk <coughs> about the Supreme Court, yeah. which is uh, obviously very timely. And we've got Tyler Giles coming on to do some music. Megan, I know you don't use, you have used dating services. I have. Because it's like, it's easy. It sure. works. It's fun. Christian Mingle. Christian Mingle. Yeah. <laughs> Jay Day. <laughs> Farmer's Daughter. Jay Day, yeah. Yeah. You do, I think you do JoanofArc.com. Right. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Hey. exactly. And I know you don't do Tinder, no. and we don't want you to, because Tinder's like really blunt. <laughs> like, let's hook up. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no. And that's a bad thing. <laughs> yeah, it's a bad thing. Yeah, I'm yeah. just pointing it out. <laughs> pointing it out. <laughs> just that's for those who thing. are confused. <laughs> yeah. But get this, Megan. What's that, Jane? And this relates to Jerry Springer. What? Because what he's happily doesn't? married. He doesn't use his stuff. Right. So that, that's Thank not God. the point. If it had been around when you <laughs> yeah, two were young, be holy horrible. cow. Oh you, my you God. would have messed it up. No, I'd go to a... His <laughs> wise ass would be in there and mess it up for everybody. He broke Tinder. He broke <laughs> <laughs> a begging site. Yeah. <laughs> Just please, please, please don't run away dot com. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so they got this new thing, <laughs> Tinder Select, <clears throat> kind of like yes. select soccer. You sure, know, it's the like kids playing. You got to okay. be invited in. Oh, oh really? That's like a higher level. Tinder. I, I do my due diligence on this. I look stuff right? up. You know. Why do you know about this? I, and I don't use think. the internet. No, because I'm also married. You know, uh -huh. Bonnie, tap dancing Bonnie. She's been on the tap show before. Bonnie. I love Bonnie. <laughs> 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 By the way, <laughs> she went. By the way, Megan, she went to this another. My wife tap dancing by. Yeah. <laughs> she went to another uh, social committee. Oh, how is this no, social no, committee? No, I got to talk about that. <laughs> anyway, Megan, <coughs> Tinder <coughs> Select okay. is a site where if you're on <coughs> Tinder, mm -hmm. in the upper right hand corner, you might see a blue dot. Sure. If that blue dot appears, <laughs> click on it. How because, closely are you looking at no, this? No, I read. I read an article. Anyway, it's got a blue dot. If you click on the blue dot, then that'll you, you're in. Oh. You've been invited in, and the people who are invited to Tinder select the two groups: celebrities, oh, celebrities, and people who are such stars on Tinder. Oh, so they have like they have people. Yeah, okay. they get. It's like getting you can get to the VIP room if you go to a concert sure. or something. Sure, like being yeah, okay, that makes sense. So. Um, so it's just very elite select Tinder, but okay, yeah. so do they only like date within that realm then? Can they only see other I think Tinder you select got, people? You, you can do whatever you want on Tinder. But you like, got to end up a room. But like normal people can't like hook up with this with the select what people? They, oh, what no they, way. <laughs> what if oh, they no. hit the blue dot? Oh, no. Yeah, I mean like what? What if, what if they touch the blue dot? Yeah, what if a normal person touches the blue it's dot? It's not there. Oh. It won't be on, it wouldn't be. Now, so what's the we, benefit of being on Tinder Select? Just that Tinder Select or all the Tinder Select people now huh. are playing the game in this more select group you're of really select, cool people. Why would you have to be I in the dating I was going to say, service? maybe you shouldn't be on I Tinder. Don't <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> Didn't really. But wouldn't you like to just be on it for a day and see kind of what's going on? We actually no, no, see your honest answer is no, yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> no, no. That's oh, yeah. actually <laughs> one of the stories in today's show, uh, the TV show. Yep. Uh, I, 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 this is true now that I think about it. Uh, this guy was on the show, and his girlfriend had been together for two years, and she found that he was always on the computer, always going to this dating service. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he said he had fallen in love with this girl he had met on the Internet. And they had never met, and yeah. they were coming on the show to meet. That's pretty cool. And you, yeah. and you well, facilitated it that she form, got huh? there. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, oh chairs work. were flying. Oh. <laughs> Next no, on Jerry Springer. No, but it was really, and I, and I, and I was really respectful of them. I mean I, I mean, I felt badly for the girl who came on, the woman who came on. Yep. And but you, you still because, did it, though. <laughs> because she showed up, yeah. and then the guy said no. Uh, you know, I mean, oh, just really? Typical. She showed up and he said no? Yeah, he didn't want to. He was going back to his girlfriend. Oh. And she was hurt. And I said, Well, sure. 
why would you, first of all, how can you possibly fall in love with someone that you've never even met? Yeah, yeah. And you know he had a, a, a girlfriend. Yeah. yeah. So there was no surprise here. No, it's the human and condition, Jerry. It's the human <laughs> condition. I would do more. Hemingway wrote like about that. that. I mean, Melville. Way to really bring that home. I like yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Hemingway wrote about that. Yeah, so, yeah. so it's well, a And I made a very poignant <laughs> point about it uh, just before the food fight. And then yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the human experience. The human oh, experience. <laughs> hey, the supreme. How hot is hell? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Let us know. We don't. Yeah, you'll be able to tell us. The Supremes, the Supreme yeah. Court. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. So it looks like as we are recording this podcast, we mm. are, what, three days, four days away yeah, from the what could be the nuclear option vote, which I think is going to be Friday. We're doing this on a Tuesday. Yeah, by the time people, most people listen to this, <clears throat> and by the way, I, I apologize ahead of time for my hoarseness. Um, by the time most people hear this, Gorsuch will probably already be on the Supreme Court. And so the question comes up, particularly to those of us who are left of center and who believe in a progressive America. Um, this is distressing, and yet we're probably not in a position to stop it from happening based on what the rules are. So it looks like Trump and the Republicans will get their appointment. I think the Democrats should filibuster anyway because I think we have to draw this line in the sand and I think the future of our country really is in jeopardy in terms of what our country stands for. And each day there's another little chip in the armor of what America ought to be and used to be and what we brag about and what we're proud of. And then there's another little battle that you know we have to fight. So we may not win this Supreme Court nomination. <clears throat> Gorsuch may in fact be you know, app appointed and uh, confirmed. And uh, we can say, well, he's really taking Scalia's place and therefore it doesn't really change the makeup of what the court was. The next appointment's gonna be the big one and hopefully there won't be another appointment at least until 2018 and maybe if we can pick up three seats in the Senate, then we'll be able to do better with the next appointment and keep the Supreme Court from going right wing. The Republicans on this issue, I, I think, are honestly, they're just dishonest. They're dishonest because we had Garland um, appointed by President Obama for the vacancy back in March of last year, March of 16. And Republicans refused, as you know, to even give him a hearing, hearing. And their argument was, and McConnell kept saying, we're not gonna give Obama's nomination for the Supreme Court vacancy even one hearing because this is an election year. And it's too political. Let the people decide when they vote for president and then we'll we'll have someone selected next year, this year being 2017. And the reason this is all so, that whole logic is dishonest, is even if you buy the notion that the people elected the president, you know, that, that there's an election coming up and the people should have a voice, well, the people elected Barack Obama in 2012. And by the way, that's an election where he actually, where the president actually got the most votes. So the American people actually wanted this man to be President Obama. And check the Constitution, he was elected for a four-year term. And nowhere in the Constitution does it say that his powers recede in the fourth year. He wasn't elected for a three-year term. To say that a president doesn't have the right to make an appointment and get a hearing for his nominee in the fourth year of his term because he's a, there's an election coming up 
then why in the world does a United States senator who's up for election that year in the last year of his term or her term, why do they get a vote? Let's just then say, if you are a United States senator and you are in the last year of your term, and since there's an election coming up, you may not vote on this appointment. Ooh. But of course, the whole thing was nonsense. So Garland should have gotten, should have gotten the hearing, and he should have been appointed, because Garland and Gorsuch are both qualified. Their philosophies are different, but they're both bright. They're both educated. They both have judicial demeanor. That's not the question. Let's face it, 99% of the people that are nominated for a Supreme Court appointment are pretty substantive people. So that's not the issue ever. But why should we be so concerned about this? The Supreme Court is the last vestige, the last barrier, the last line of defense for America's civil rights, civil liberties, concept of equal justice. There is no other branch of government that can guarantee that. None. You can't with the Congress, you got gerrymandering, you got individual elections that get decided for all kinds of reasons. You could have a crazy election where you have a crazy person getting elected like Trump. I mean, you can have all kinds of craziness as to why a person gets to be a president. Sometimes you love him, sometimes you don't. But the point is, that can't be the ultimate protector Someone running for a political office who is partisan, either way liberal or, lay, or way conservative, cannot be viewed as the protector of our civil liberties. The court is it. And take a look at the history of America the last 70, 100 years, 70 or 100, 200 years. <coughs> Brown versus Board of Education, the whole civil rights movement. If we didn't have the courts, anything having to do with women's rights, gay rights, voting rights, public accommodations, anything that has to do with our civil liberties, our civil rights, the Bill of Rights, the concept of equal justice, whether it's the Fifth Amendment or the Fourteenth Amendment, all of that is protected only by the Supreme Court of the United States. And we got a guy now and a, and a Senate and a Congress now who for political purposes have shifted who gets nominated and is about to make a decision of someone who could be there for 25, 30 years. This is horribly important, way more than a particular issue we otherwise argue about. That's why I, I, there should be no debate about, hell yeah, you filibuster. You demonstrate huge crowds in front of courthouses, in front of Congress, in front of the Supreme Court. America, take to the streets, not violently, but take to the streets. This is our last hope to protect justice in America, the courts particularly now when we have a Justice Department who is anti-civil rights, anti-voting rights, anti-gay rights, transgender rights. This is horribly serious. And that's, that's why uh, on this one, which it has been too much a debate over process, well, here are the rules. If we're going to have the nuclear option, and we ought to filibuster and all that. I think the debate should have been on the substance of what is at stake. Because if I think America really saw that you are now putting civil rights, racial rights, civil liberties, equal justice in the hands of a 
Trump administration, this uh, Tea Party Senate, Congress, in the hands of this Justice Department? That's scary. That's scary. Remember they told us, one by one, your rights get taken away. They pick away at it. But this isn't just one by one. This could be one fell swoop. So I wish I had a conclusion, I mean a, a, an answer to how to fix it, except we should not take this lying down. We should be applying so much pressure now that come the next pick, which will tilt the court one way or the other, let every United States senator know, even if they are in the most Republican of states, that they will be held accountable for any loss of civil rights, civil liberties, equal justice that happens in our country. We will hold you responsible. <clears throat> Do you notice, Megan, that Jerry's mm. flu-stricken voice is sort of a calm. It's very calm. Very calm. Yeah, yeah, I liked it. It's yeah. good. It works Wonder. on Tinder, too. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Again, how do you just I, go from such nice I, substance yeah, to that. good to but Jerry? Yeah. Where again. did the podcast start tonight? I know. Wise acidness. Yes. Boom. <laughs> there it is. Hi, this is, this is Jerry. No. Ew, <laughs> ew, oh, ew, no. ew, ew, ew. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. No. <laughs> No, usually I use another name. <laughs> may I ask, uh, yeah. may I ask Tyler uh, this is uh, Giles to come forward, and they ask Tyler's coming mm. up hey, Tyler. to set up. Tell you a couple things about him. Woo He's here for Tyler. <laughs> We're going to get more specific information from him when he's all set up, but I can tell you that he is mm. uh, part of a band called the Harmed Brothers, and they're going to be oh, on in a future podcast. Ooh, wow. And they are, they're great. Mm -hmm. So Tyler comes <laughs> highly recommended, you know, from his day job with them. And they're a band from, from the yeah. West Coast, right? From Oregon? Yeah, uh, from Portland. From Portland. <coughs> and uh, Tyler, you play. Oh, is Oregon the team that lost to? Uh, yeah, Final Four. That was yeah. Oregon Ducks. And Tyler plays uh, electric keyboard, I think. Uh, I'm the pedal steel player. You're a pedal steel yeah. player. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah, that's me with, with uh, the Harm Brothers. Uh, so listen in the future and you'll hear him in that setting uh, mm. with the Harm Brothers. Uh, Tyler, do a song for us and then we're gonna talk a little bit with you with the other side of that. Please cut me off before she cuts me loose Don't pour me head another Or her love I will lose I can't say no to one more Bartender I'm trusting drink <clears throat> I used to sneak it when my dad fell asleep it made him mean and it made mama cry
It's been several years since my love and I wed. And too many nights I've crawled drunk into bed. Now my wife sleeps so long. While I'm down at the pub And she cries just like mama As she falls out of love Boy, there's nothing, and, and Megan, you're an old bartender from your college days. There's yep. nothing better than a good bartender song. Yeah, yeah. that is. Yeah. Good bar song. Sad song. Uh, that, <laughs> is re that is really good. Thank you. Hey, by the way, isn't this, uh, I'd like to give a round of applause to the Folk School Coffee Parlor for this place. Yeah. Because, and Tyler, I would ask you this as a performer. This is such an intimate listening room. That's what this ends up being. Yeah. It's a real, everybody's in nice and tight, and it's just a wonderful place to hear a song like that. Mm -hmm. and, and we've had, you know, seven pieces in here, and it's like, yeah. you know, windows are rattling, too. But this mm -hmm. is such a wonderful thing. And when you consider the expense of the tickets. Right. Wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> but that is really, that's original song. Yes, sir. And uh, yes. where, so where do you live? Are you uh, from close Portland? Close to Branson, Missouri, like just north thereof. Oh, really? Okay. No kidding. Yeah, I was there for a couple of summers doing The Price is Right. Is that right? Oh. And it just, uh, is Mickey Gilly still there? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, great guy. Oh, man, it, Branson's a great town. Yeah. Yep. yep. It, a lot of commerce and... Sadly, a lot, but a lot of the the old guys that built it, Andy Williams, et cetera, they're gone. Yeah. yeah. I mean, Mel Tillis is still still around. Yeah. And, uh, Mo Bandy's still doing his thing. Oh, sure, yeah. yeah. So we, we still got a lot of guys down there doing some awesome stuff. Yeah, there is. Yep. A, I remember when I was a, just a pup, Charlie Pride had a theater down there. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It nice. Was, it was the place to be. Hey, do a second song for us, would you? Sure. I'll try not to be so <laughs> sad as that. No, one. that's <laughs> a good one. <laughs> Tyler Giles. It's okay. This is about my hometown. I was born in a river town Where the old folks sang the old time sounds If I go missing, that's where I'll be At the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek The edge of the water on Buffalo Creek 
Or I could smell the honeysuckle in the air I feel the warm summer breeze blow through my hair I say my prayers down on my knees At the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek The edge of the water on Buffalo Creek Come on, preacher, won't you baptize me at the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek? Come on, preacher, won't you baptize me at the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek? We spend a lot of time making fools of us. Drinking and fighting and kicking up dust. I'm amazed those days weren't the death of me. At the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek, the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek. But the baby blue dress and her auburn hair. Anywhere she'd go, you could find me. Summer love made a man of me At the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek The edge of the water on Buffalo Creek Ooh. Ooh. Come on preacher, won't you baptize me At the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek Come on preacher, won't you baptize me at the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek. Come on preacher, won't you baptize me at the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek. Well, come on preacher, won't you baptize me at the edge of the water on Buffalo Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Great. Oh, man. Really good stuff. That's Ooh. Tyler Giles. Hey, here's how you can uh, hear his music. Go to TylerGilesMusic.com. Giles is G-I-L-E-S. And he's got an album coming out called The Hard Way. be available in May. And you can also hear him on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, blah, blah. You know, all you the, the usual yeah. places. I mean, very really. good. Hey, do you know Enjoy. the music of Jesse Winchester by any chance? Mm -hmm. Say that again. You ever heard of Jesse Winchester? Not offhand, I don't know. Y your music is uh, similar, and, and he's, he's really good. He sadly died, I don't know, a year ago, uh, way too early. He wasn't a real old guy. He's got a great story. Uh, he's from Mississippi, and he ran from the war back in the 60s to Canada, spent most of his life in Canada, then came back into America and lived out the latter years of his life up there. Jesse Winchester, you said. Jesse Winchester. Okay. Uh, and he's got some songs that that song reminded me of, hometown songs, mm -hmm. kind of a rural setting. Sure. So I tell you, Tyler, you're, you're really good, and we're really glad you came by Thank here. and uh, yeah. got to hear you. Yeah. 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 So can you take us out on down by the riverside and Jerry with this old screwed up voice is going to jump in too. Do he might do an octave below where you I'll, are. I'll, I'll, I'll make you so. think of Branson, Missouri by God. Yeah. Take me home on that. Tyler Giles, <laughs> down by the riverside. Study war no more, I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't 
gonna lay down my sword and shield down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I'm gonna lay down my sword and shield. Down by the riverside. Down by the riverside. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Ain't gonna study war no more. Y'all come back now, you hear? Osmond, the, the Osmonds still performing there at the Osmond Theater? Anymore, yeah. Anymore, yeah. 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 